Mao takes a look at the recent short debate held by the Lord's Grand Committee to ask His Majesty's Government what steps they are taking to support a safe and sustainable future for mopeds, motorcycles and the powered light vehicle industry. My Lords, we now come to question for short debate supporting a safe and sustainable future for mopeds, motorcycles and the powered light vehicle industry. Baroness Ritchie of Downpatrick. Mag was alerted to a debate being tabled by Baroness Ritchie of Downpatrick just before the NEC Motorcycle Live show. Scheduled to take place on Thursday the 23rd of November, Mag's Director of Campaigns and Political Engagement contacted the Baroness to find out what the debate would cover and was invited by her to submit a briefing paper. Seeing that the debate was being pushed by the MCIA, it was disappointing not to have been alerted to the debate by the MCIA with enough notice to allow MAG to educate potential speakers at the debate. We did manage to send off a brief note to Baroness Ritchie with links to some of MAG's reports and research. It may well be this intervention that led Baroness Ritchie in her speech to say, This is doing this supported by the Industry Association. Now those who are the motor drivers would take a slightly different position. Some of the comments made in the opening speech were a little concerning. Initially, she said, I isn't to ask, but I'm not a petrol head. And if anybody asks me to go on these vehicles, I think I might go on Strange how a debate of this nature is being led by someone with, let's say, less than a positive outlook on motorcycles. She was of the opinion, or should we say the MCIA had told her that, There is a need for increased government promotion of our light vehicles, and that sector, that is, I suppose, the Motor Vehicle Industry Association, their primary challenge is transit, uh, transitioning zero emissions there was some evidence that the MCIA is getting more vocal about allowing a true technology neutral approach rather than simply delaying the inevitability of battery electric only legislation. But most of the debate was couched in language that betrays a lack of understanding that zero at the tailpipe means zero tailpipe. Unsurprisingly, there were calls for a a review of the current grant incentivization structure. That battery electric technology cannot compete on a level playing field with the current technologies probably tells you quite a lot and explains why they feel there is a need for a public awareness campaign jointly led by government and industry to promote the existence, availability and benefits of zero emissions to PLVs to consumers and businesses. The dangers of tying the future of motorcycling to net zero policy were abundant in the speech. On licensing, the Baroness said, is simplifying the existing, the existing licensing regime across all health category segments to improve access to zero emission PLVs for a wider section of the community, increasing access, update and adoption. This sounds like a call for a two-tier licensing system to further incentivise uptake of zero tailpipe bikes. MAG is calling for simplification to increase uptake of motorcycling, not electric motorcycling. Lord Moylan put his finger on what is really the primary challenge for motorcycling. He said... So when I started working in the field of transport when I was involved, both as a local councillor and then later with Transport for London, I, I was surprised at the comprehensive hostility of the transport, uh, transport policy professionals towards the motorcycle sector, which they di dignify with the name powered two-wheelers, um, a sort of bizarre distortion of the English language, um, or, or even sort of, you know, category L vehicles. But I'm going to... In my few minutes, I'm going to take your time. I'm going to refer to them as motorcycles generally, uh, because I think that is a, a word that more people understand. And they are very hostile to them. Uh, any suggestion that there should be a privilege for them, any suggestion that there should be special provision, oh, special provision for, for push bikes, that's absolutely all right, but, but nothing at all to do with motorcycles. 
Uh, any suggestion like that is pushed back. I, I, I often wonder when it is the Conservative Party, which is the heir to the Cavaliers, uh, adopted a Puritan agenda. Um, and even if one actually accepts that the uh, large-scale destruction of much of our economic capacity is justified by the very serious threats of climate change, it is a net zero target, not an absolute zero target. That is, it is accepted that there is going to be some, um, uh, some uh, carbon emissions going ahead. Um, given the very small contribution that this sector makes uh, to um, uh, our overall zero emissions, could my noble friend perhaps say when he answers that he is willing to cut this sector some slack? Lord Ranger of Northwood made a very short speech, but following Lord Moylan's insightful comment, it demonstrates the value of individuals who actually know how to ride motorcycles being involved in policy making. He said, I did hold the role of Mayor's Transport Advisor from 2008 to 2011 in this city, and during that time had much chance to consider and look at the policies of different modes that are applied in the city. One mode I was not a part of then, didn't use, was a motorbike. I fixed that by learning how to ride a motorbike when I took on the role because I thought it was important if we were looking at judging policy on this thing to actually have the experience. What it taught me was a, yes, I had to learn how to ride and not fall off, but heightened awareness of safety and security of not just me as a rider, but of all other users of the road network, including pedestrians, cyclists, HEVs, and everything else. It was a revolutionary experience because you had a completely different perspective on what was happening and how you felt about your personal safety and of usage. But also, it took me into a very deep conversation about what were the benefits and the challenges. The benefits became ever clearer around asking the motorcycling and power two-wheeler community as it was there, and there weren't the electric mopeds at that point, about what the usages were. Firstly, I have to acknowledge the warmth of the community. It's a very strong... Anyone who is a biker will know that they are a very good community to be part of. But also, that they actually see the journey time reliability, the flexibility, the safety that they have as being vital parts of using this mode of transport. And it does bring benefits not just to them, but to broader society and in the city. I think London as a city itself actually lags behind some of the similar cities in the world that really rely on power two-wheelers to be part of the extensive social mix. You can think of cities in a number of European um, countries that will demonstrate that. So there's something culturally that we haven't quite got right there. But uh, I think on this part, I would like to say that I would ask the Minister to please consider, consider in his deliberations the need to recognise the personal ability to use bikes and the benefits it brings, the commuting, the logistics, the minimal impact on the environment. Yes, enforcement must be considered as greater usage of motorbikes and power two wheelers in the logistics um, in, uh, industry, but I think that's a growing industry that will only provide benefit to uh, dense urban areas rather than actually be a hindrance. Thank you. Lord Moylan and Lord Ranger, between them, identified the real primary challenge and the solution. They should be recipients of a special award from Motorcyclists First and then given ministerial posts at the DFT immediately. Rishi Sunak managed to make David Cameron a lord so that he could give him a cabinet role. Well, it's time to give cabinet roles to a pair of competent existing lords. Protocol for such debates is for a ministerial response, which was delivered by the Parliamentary Undersecretary of State, Department for Transport, Lord Davis of Gower. At the time of the debate, he had a full nine days' experience in the role under his belt, so we awaited his insight with bated breath. Needless to say, we didn't learn much from the response. We would point out his comment on licensing, though. He said, The Department is currently engaged with MCIA's recent licensing review proposals to address Action 6 to review minimum testing and license entitlements for all battery electric L category vehicles. This again suggests that in the minds of the department, 
The review will be for licenses to ride battery electric motorcycles only. We don't want to say told you so, that to be fair, we did tell you so.